Hello and welcome everyone to our blind let's play Phoenix Wright is attorney. I am so excited to be here with you all. I am the Footless Bird. This is your story based gaming channel. And after having just completed Zero Escape, uh, the whole series was amazing. Then we went on to either Somnium Files. And recently we just got as far as we can in your turn to die. So it's about time to start a brand new series as we wait for new your turn to die parts to come out and I have been told this series is absolutely amazing and I I want to dive right in shall we L let's go Phoenix Wright is attorney play this game episode one the first turnabout If you are curious, yes, we will be going through all three games in the series. Huh. Huh. Ooh. Murdered someone with a statue. Dang it. Uh, why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. Wearing gloves? I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. <laughs> I'll make it look like he did it. August 3rd, 947 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Boy, am I nervous. Oh, listen to this music, this is... Oh, this is cool. I like this. Right. Oh, uh, uh, hiya, Chief. Woo, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A uh, favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Uh, yeah. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons that I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. All the dots? Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair, oh! I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die! Sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Uh, hey! Hey there, Larry! Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! Uh, what? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I, I, I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her! I can't! Who, who took away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. Hmm, hmm. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap that was dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. 
One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August the 3rd, 10 o'clock a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Ahem, <clears throat> the court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, your honor. The, um, defense is ready, your honor? Ahem. Uh, Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Uh, y yes, your honor, I, um, am a, 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 a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a uh, serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your uh, nerves. Thank, uh, th 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 thank you, y your honor. Uh, the Dutz. Well, uh, Mr. Wright, given the uh, circumstances, I uh, think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Uh, y yes, your honor. Uh, hands shaking, eyesight fading. <laughs> uh, the test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them uh, clearly and concisely. Uh, please state the name of the defendant in this case. Uh, that would be Larry Butts, your honor. Uh, the defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, your honor. Uh, that's correct. Just keep your wits about you and uh, you'll do fine. Uh, next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, uh, what's the victim's name? Uh, ooh. I know this one. I'm glad I read the case report cover so to cover so many times. It's uh, wait, uh, oh, uh, no, no way! I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? What does court record do? Attorney's badge. No one believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. Cindy's autopsy report. Time of death: 7:31. Uh, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. So her name was Cindy. We have Mia Fay. She's 27, the chief attorney at Fay and Company. Uh, my boss and a very good defense attorney. We have Mr. Larry Butts, age 23, the defendant in this case. A likable guy who has been my friend since grade school. Cindy Stone, age 22. She's the victim in this case. A model, she lived in an apartment by herself. And now we have Winston Payne, who's 52, uh, the prosecutor for this case. He lacks presence. Generally bad at getting his points across. Hmm. So we have profiles in R1 and evidence on this side. Okay, I got it. So her name is Cindy Stone. You don't even know the def the, the victim's name? Oh, uh, the, the victim. Uh, 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 of of course I know the victim's name. I I, I um I j just forgot T temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. <laughs> Look, the victim name is listed in the court record. Just press the R1 button to check at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Uh, Mr. Wright. Uh, who is the victim in this case? Well, thankfully, I just pressed the R1 button, so I know it is Miss Cindy Stone. Cinderblock. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. Just for... Just for... Practice. We had to know what happens if you choose wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose Miss Cinderblock to see what happens when you choose the wrong response. It's probably just going to re-explain the tutorial, but I need to check. Oh, um, wasn't it, uh, Miss Block? You know, Miss Cinder Block? 
Ugh. Person in question was a victim of murder. Not ill-conceived naming, Mr. Wright. <laughs> right? If you forget something, use the R1 button to check the court record and jog your memory. A mistake in court could cost you the case. Uh, let's do it again. Mr. Wright, who is the uh, victim in this case? All right, let's... Let's go ahead and choose the correct answer here because I don't want to lose the case. That would be kind of sad if... You know, I don't want to put him in a bad light. Um, the victim's name is, uh, uh, Cin C Cindy Stone. That's it. Uh, correct. Now, uh, tell me, what was the cause of death? She, uh, died because she was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a, uh, blunt object. Uh, correct. You've, uh, answered all my questions. See no reason why we shouldn't, uh, proceed. You see, much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Uh, th thank you, Your Honor. <sighs> because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well, uh, then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. Y yes Your Honor. As Mr. Ray just told us, the uh, victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you uh, explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. Isn't that the guy who killed her? Is it? No. Gosh. Sometimes my brain doesn't put things together like some other people put things together. So I'm not really sure if that's the same person or not. Um, we'll just assume it's not the same person, but if we get clues later on to tell us it's a person, then we'll uh, we'll jump on it. I see. Uh, the court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Statue, a statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right? Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R1 button to check the court record frequently. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the thinker here. It looks like it's the same description as it just said. By the way, you cannot click on the evidence to uh, bring up a... a secondary view. Sort of like how in Silent Hill, when you look at the, uh, uh, the items, you can uh, manipulate them. Same thing with Resident Evil... Uh, Resident Evil 8 game that we played you had to look at items and like rotate them to be able to You know get things from an item. You can't do that here. So nothing complicated uh, Mr. Payne the uh, prosecution may call its uh, first witness The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand Um chief. Oh, uh chief. What do I do now? Pay attention you don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the persecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. By the way, I want to see if there's a way to... Text skip, screen shake, vibration... Text box, no. Save a load of game. Okay, so this is how you save your game. Cool, let's go ahead and drop a save while we're here. Uh, episode one, the first turnabout, day one trial. All right. Uh, ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently uh, dumped you? Uh, hey, uh, watch it, buddy. Uh, we were great together. We were, uh, Romeo and Juliet, uh, Cleopatra and, uh, Mark Anthony. You know, just saying, Larry, um, considering those people all died because of their relationship, maybe those aren't the examples you should be using. Um, did they all die? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I know I said this before, but I love it when the protagonist and I are on the same page. It always makes me smile. Uh, I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or uh, seeing me. Uh, ever. 
Oh, what's it to you anyway? Uh, Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by, uh, don't. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. As she had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. Oh, what do you mean, one of them? Lies, it's all of it lies. I don't believe a word of it. Uh, your honor, the victim's passport. Uh, according to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Uh, passport, the victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder. Hmm, indeed. She uh, appears to have returned the day before the murder. Uh, dude, no way! Uh, the victim was a model, but she did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Uh, daddies? Sugar? Uh, yes, you know, older men who gave her money and gifts. Uh, she took the money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! Uh, we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Uh, tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? So, the fact that that's in red means this is really important for something. Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Uh, yeah, uh, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all of the wrong directions. Should I... Wait, is it what happens? Stop from answering. Well, we should obviously stop from answering, right? My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. The question is irrelevant to this case. Ooh, uh, uh, uh. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? Oh, that cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die, I just wanna drop dead. Yeah, and when I met her in the afterlife, I'm gonna go to the bottom of this. Uh, let's uh, continue with the trail, uh, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Uh, yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Yeah, so what everyone's thinking is that he wants to die because he's guilty of killing her, and therefore he obviously did it. This, yeah. We could have had a, uh, better first case. Next question. You walked to the victim's apartment on the date of the murder, did you not? Uh... Well, uh, did you or did you not? Uh, he <laughs> Well, uh, maybe I uh, did. And, uh, maybe I, uh, didn't. Uh-oh. He went. What do I do? I'm um, answer honestly, stop him from answering. You know what, last time we did this and it didn't work out for us, so let's just go with this because they have evidence that he probably did it, so... I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell. The. Truth. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I uh, was there. I went. Uh, order. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Butts. Dude, uh, chill. Uh, she wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Whoa, that was out of nowhere. Uh, your honor, the defendant is lying. Uh, lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove that Mr. Butts is lying. Uh, well, that simplifies matters. Uh, who is your uh, witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. I... <laughs> he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Uh, order in the court! Uh, Mr. Payne, the uh, prosecution may call its uh, witness. Yes, your honor. Oh, this is bad. On the day of my murder, uh, the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. 
please bring Mr. Frank Sabit to the stand. Oh, this is the guy who killed him, isn't it? I don't remember, but that, that, that mark on his forehead seems familiar. Mr. Sobit, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, oh yes! And newspapers, yes! Uh, Mr. Sobit, you may proceed with your uh, testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. What is testimony? Witnesses account. I was going door to do it, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he may be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. I think it is strange. I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought he'd call the police immediately. However, their phone in apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and I found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. Yeah, it was uh, 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, the man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting uh, right over there. Hmm. This isn't looking good already. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I, I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Uh, incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Uh, y your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Uh, aren't phones supposed to work during the uh, blackout? Uh, yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Soviet used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Electricity in Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, uh, I mean, yes, Your Honor. Uh, you may begin your cross examination. Cross examination, Your Honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? Wait, what? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Uh, all the exclamation marks. Uh, how do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. All right, let's look at this real quick. Call's time of death was between four to five. Didn't he just say he called at 1 p.m.? Six. Yeah, I'm... Discovered Miss Stone's body. Newspaper salesman who saw Larry flee the scene. He said it was at one o'clock. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the Arwa button and point out contradictions in the testimony. Yeah, okay, so he said it was at one o'clock, but the time of death was not. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Oh, I think it is strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead I tell ya. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in the apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Here it is. So this is obviously a lie because she was killed between 4 and 5. So how could he have called three hours before death? Now the phone 
the phone uh, of him trying to call is backed up by this report. So according to this, there's no way he could have called because there was a blackout. However, the time that he wanted to call is what's at play here. Present. Objection. There's the objection. Oh, that's the only thing I know about this game is the objection. And that was our first. At least that was our first. Uh, the other guy objected earlier. You found the body at 1 o'clock p.m. Are you sure? Uh, yes, it was 1 o'clock p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes a time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, er, uh, no body to find at 1 o'clock p.m. So how do you explain this three hour gap? All the exclamation marks! Uh oh, oh that uh, you're a uh, ma Whoa! Uh, this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. Mm hmm. After his uh, testimony, I find that hard to uh, believe. Uh, Mr. Sweet, why are you so certain that you found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? I, uh, I, uh, well, uh, gee, uh, that's. Well, that's a really good question! Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. That's why you should always be true to yourself. See through one, and the whole story falls apart. Uh, wait! I, I, I remember now! <sighs> Would you, uh, care to give your testimony again? Witness testimony, the time of discovery. <laughs> you see, uh, when I found the body, I, uh, heard the time. Yes, uh, there was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the, uh, television. Uh, oh, uh, but it was, uh, three hours off, uh, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. Uh, that's why I thought it was 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, terribly sorry about the misunderstanding, Your Honor. Hey, you know, yeah. Hmm, I uh, see. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Uh, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. Yes, I know what to do. I got this one. Did you all figure it out yet? Time of discovery. Uh, heard the time? There's a voice saying the time? Probably coming from the television. Okay. Watching a video. So there's two statements that could be interesting here. One is this one. And the second one is this one. Both of these can probably be... Um, contradicted. What does press mean? And what do I mean by contradicted? Because, oh, because of this right here. Uh, there was from noon to 6 p.m. Uh, there was a blackout. There's no way you could have been watching television. So whether or not it's based on whether or not it's the first response where he said it was probably coming from the television or the second response saying she was watching a tape program, they both should lead to the same result. I really want to know what this press button is, though. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Oh, well, no, I guess it uh, might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television. Uh, the witness has testified. He heard the time. Oh, uh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? Okay, so here, by pressing this, we have gotten information that it can't be anything other than the television. Because a radio can work without power. So this is almost like your turn to die uh, when you um, 
draw out more information from someone and then use that drawn out information to present the material. So let's go ahead and present to him the blackout report. Objection! Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. All the dots. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah! I am a liar! The defense has a point. Uh, do you have an explanation for this, uh, Mr. Sewitt? I uh, know, I find it quite puzzling myself. Uh, yes, uh, quite puzzling. All the dots. Ah! Oh, wait, 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 I remember now. Mr. Sewitt, the uh, court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. Uh, these constant corrections are harming your credibility. Oh, well, I, you seem rather uh, distraught. Oh, right, that's the judge. <laughs> uh, he does look rather distraught, though. Uh, that, and uh, you seem rather uh, distraught. Oh, the uh oh dots. Oh, my apologies, your honor. Uh, it, uh, it must have been the, uh, the shock of uh, finding the uh, body. Uh, very well, Mr. Sweet. Uh, let's hear your testimony one more time, please. Here we go again. Here in the time. Uh, actually, I, I didn't um, hear the time. I, I, I saw it. Uh, there was a table clock in the apartment. It, it wasn't there. Uh, yeah, uh, the murder weapon. The, the killer used it to hit the victim. Uh, that must have been what I saw. Yes. That's it. That's what I saw. You, uh, so clock. Well, I, uh, guess it would explain it. Uh, the defense may, uh, cross-examine the witness. I uh, gladly. I like how confident he seems to be getting now. Starts out, like, all intrepid, and now he's just like, Yeah, this is easy. We got this. Do, 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 do. Um, the murder weapon. Press. The murder weapon. Uh, oh, yeah, so the table clock that was used as a weapon. Oh, that's what I just said. Did uh, you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. All right, let's attack on one, sh shall we? Uh, present. And the statue. Objection! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue! Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You with your objections and your evidence? Just what do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, uh, I, I... I saw it there, okay. Uh, th that's a clock. Y your Honor, if I may. Uh, yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize that. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. Yeah, but you would have to use it to say the time, right? As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. Uh, so the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, uh, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. Uh, this is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes, I do! Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. He, 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 the guy clearly said that the only way it reads the time is when you, like, flip the neck. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Exactly. Yet, the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly, a contradiction. Hmm. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, 
prove it. I, I, prove, I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you the one who killed her. Uh, you, s you struck her with a clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound that you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Uh, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Uh, uh, would the uh, witness care to uh, elaborate? Did you uh, strike the victim with the uh, clock? I, 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 that, that, that day, I never. Oh, look, I heard the clock. I heard no. I mean, I saw so so so. did I say? Uh, your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Uh, Mr. Wright. Your Honor? Uh, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the uh, clerk. Do you uh, have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think through it carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Ooh, look at the one on the top right. That must be like our stamina bar if, uh... If we get it wrong. Examine the clock's batteries. Ask the neighbors. Try sounding the clock. Hmm. Maybe he took out the batteries? Which is what's going on here? I really wish it was a, uh, I really wish it was a, um, a way to view previous dialogue. Maybe there is, and I just haven't found it yet. Uh, let's see. Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it... I think it's 8.15. Uh, that certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. <laughs> so, uh, we heard the clerk. What are your conclusions, uh, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? Uh, it, it's, uh, 11.25. Eck! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Oh! Oh, that's brilliant! Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Sawit, uh, try to talk your way out of this. Try to talk your way out of this one. Oh, the dots. Huh, huh, huh. Uh, you forget one thing. Uh oh. What's he talking about now? Uh, well, it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. Uh, I appreciate nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? Uh, if you can't prove that, you don't have a case. All the curious thoughts. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Dang it. I was so close. Uh, Mr. Wright. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. All the inspirational dots? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the uh, cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. 
I come all the way down here to test survive. Look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! <sighs> I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Subwit. All right, Mia! Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! Uh, but Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time downing the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right? Right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Uh, no, but I'm gonna say yes anyway. Sure, why not? All the dots. Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let him have it. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Wright. You will see the clock is already running slow in the day of the murder. Have you uh, found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Uh, let's see the evidence that proves why the clock is running slow. Why was the clock running slow? Loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Rather heavy. Victim arrived day before the murder. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out. I'm having a thought. I'm having a thought. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how this fully works, but my thought is that she took the statue with her to Paris. And the reason the clock was running slow is because she changed the time to compensate for the time difference in Paris. Now, I don't know the actual time difference between what I'm assuming Japan and Paris. Paris is? But it's what I'm going with. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. Ah! Aha! But how's that explain 3 hours? Oh, because it doesn't say a.m. or p.m. It just says the time. The clock wasn't three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sowit. Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> just passed out. I'd say that's proof enough. Uh, order, order, I say. We did it, you guys. Woo! Well, uh, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Uh, Mr. Payne, your witness. Ah, he, uh, he was arrested and has ten taken away, your honor. Uh, very well. Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, your honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. I find the true culprit at the same time. Uh, thank you, your honor. Well, at this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. Ha ha ha! I love the fanfare, it's amazing! That's so cool! And uh, with that, this court is adjourned. Woo!
Oh, all right. Turns out that Fanks the Wit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sewitt let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sewitt grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant, Lobby Number 2. Whew! Still can't believe we won. I know, let me tell you. Woohoo! Well, this game is off to a wonderful start. I truly enjoy that. That was amazing. That was cool. Great tutorial telling you how things work, how to use items, how to press people for information, and I, this is a great start! I'm so excited to play more! So come join us next time in our blind let's play, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, I know I'm going to say this at the end of the video in my outro, but considering this is the first video new series, if you do like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button because it's always important that the first video receives, you know, the most amount of love that it can. I want to say thank you everyone. I'm recording this on my first year anniversary of YouTube and I can't wait to see what the next year is going to bring about. And heralding it in with the brand new blind let's play, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is, I think, the best way we can do that. Ooh, I love you all so very much, and until next time, my friends, so long, and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you would like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more. Also, please do not forget, you matter, you are brilliant, and you are loved. And you should always remember to be true to yourself. Don't let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly feathered flightless bird. Till next time.